new business. Now we will hear a review of our counseling program across the district. Welcome. Yes. Coming up? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, I'll drive. Yes. And just, just so you know, just housekeeping, the microphone not only serves this room, but also serves as audio for TV. So okay. if you if you talk back from where Julie is, we won't be able to hear you. We'll be able to hear you, but the folks that would watch this over and over and over again throughout the week <laughs> would not be able to hear you. Right, well, th thank you for allowing us the opportunity to speak to you guys this evening. I'm Sarah Kalin. I'm one of the counselors at Rolla High School. And you're, I'm going to be re uh, reporting with Julie Peterman on the state of um, the counseling program, K-12. Because counseling is more than uh, just the people that hold the position. It is a whole program. So there's a lot to learn. So um, maybe. There we go. Um, thank you for taking a picture with us before you guys went to your seats this evening. Next Thanks week. <laughs> Next week is National School Counseling Week, so your picture will uh, will be putting that in the paper just in honor of National School Counseling Week. Uh, that is a national effort to just bring light to the thing that counselors do because a lot of times we find that we are kind of a mystery. People a lot of times know what, think they know what teachers do. They know you know they were in a classroom, and a lot of times they don't necessarily have, haven't spent a lot of time in the counseling centers to know exactly how it is that we serve students. So um, we're going to let you know a few of those things this evening. Oh, well, there we go. So the first thing we're starting off with is just the ratio of students to counselor per building, as well as the support staff. So you guys um, can see there and that we have lots of kids served total. Um, it looks like the, the largest number obviously being at the high school and um, on behalf of the high school counselors, I'd like to thank you guys right now for the addition of a fourth counselor at Rolla High School. It has meant uh, a, world of, a world of change for us and has really improved the way in which we're able to serve students. So um, it's, it's been very beneficial. So school counselor. The correct title is school counselor. There was legislation re recently passed that uh, went through the state that we are no longer guidance counselors because so much we do so much more than just guiding students about their classes and their career paths. Um, we, we talk to them about strategies for success in the classroom, of course, but then we're also helping them with mental health issues and community outreach, trying to get them connected with community services and so many other things that we do. Um, we counsel, we teach, and we advocate for students. So the Missouri Comprehensive... Oh, there it is. Missouri Comprehensive Guidance Program. Com oh, look at me. I did it. Guidance and Counseling Program. Um, <laughs> sorry. Is based on academic performance. You know, we help students with academic performance, their mental health, career development, and collaboration. That's, that's a big piece of what we do. Not only working with students, but also helping them learn how to advocate for themselves in the classroom, maybe talking to teachers with some of those tough questions, and with parents. A lot of times um, we're helping the parents because raising teenagers is not easy at the high school. Um, I know we, we seem to talk to parents a lot about what we can, how we can help their child um, as they grow and develop. So there is a lot of collaboration and accountability. Um, there are program components. We said that counseling is more than just the person. It is a program. So one of the components is the school counseling curriculum. There is a K-12 curriculum for school counseling um, available from DESE. It is a state approved um, and worked through. And there are lots of great lessons. And you'll see a little, in a little bit how the different buildings address curriculum in, um, in terms of how we spend our time. The individual student planning, of course, which is an ongoing systemic approach to focusing children, not just for tomorrow or what classes they're going to have. We're in the middle of scheduling at the high school right now, so it's all about what classes do I want next year so I can have lunch with my friends, you know, trying to get them to think a little bit beyond that and actually have an end goal in mind. So, so that's, that's how K-12 we address student planning. You know, it starts at the elementary levels when they're talking about what career possibilities there are. Um, I personally grew up in a small town and didn't know about a lot of different career opportunities until I got out of there. So a lot of what we do now is trying to expose 
um, kids to career possibilities they may not have even thought of. When I moved to Rolla and I had a seventh grade band student tell me they wanted to be a metallurgical engineer, I said, oh, what, what, what? What is that? Because it, it wasn't something I was familiar with. I hadn't grown up around, around that kind of science in my hometown. So we're exposing them to all different kinds of things globally to be a global citizen. We also do a lot of responsive services. The third component there, responsive services is just what it sounds like. It is um, when we have our list of things that we need to get done that day and we only get two items checked off because we're responding to student need when they're in crisis in our buildings, in our classrooms. Um, and when we need to work with them. Sometimes it's an individual setting in our office or um, sometimes it's a small group setting where we have small groups um, that counsel kids around specific issues. For example, at the high school this year, we've been able to implement not only the grief group, which also goes on at the junior high, um, but we have a family changes group for students who are, maybe their family's in transition. It's a deployment or a divorce or, you know, mother has a profound illness, those sort of things so we can help them and support them. We also have a study skills group um, where we work with students who are struggling with those issues. And then, Stress and anxiety group, thank you. So that's, um, that's the one that we have an increasing number of students not, not really knowing how to deal with their anxiety. So we're trying to help them work through that, which we're able to do in, a, in that small group setting. So um, the fourth component there is system support. And that's the paperwork. <laughs> that's you know, the necessary things that we need to do to make sure the other parts of our program are working, um, working well. Roll this on the side. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm Julie Peterman again. I'm the counselor at Wyman Elementary. We probably should have announced um, all of our staff. Uh, we have all of our counselors here in support because we um, we have to work together in what we do. Um, it's really wonderful. We've had a meeting in the past where we well, we meet every year with a guidance advisory committee. And um, a couple years ago, one of my kindergartners that was sitting in the hallway every day, and I would sit with him and. And I knew he was going to be smart because he figured out how to get that paper to sit on stick to the ceiling when you got it wet in the bathroom, you know. So I knew he was a smart kid. Anyway, and I saw him at one of our meetings when he was in junior high, and it was just wonderful to see him. And then now I know he's joining the military, he's graduated, you know. So it's just great to be able to follow these kids and these. we all work together to do that. And um, it's a wonderful experience to be a part of. So what Sarah covered is what we spent um, a whole semester in college covering um, about how a comprehensive guidance system works. Sorry, see the guidance slipped out because they just changed it, and that's the slide was totally my fault. Anyway, so the um, one thing they look at in order to be um, a successful program that has proven, you know, through research to be effective, is they look. We have to look at what we do with each our time. And so up there are the recommended times that you should spend on each of the areas that she discussed. So you can see, I'm not going to, like I said, we spend a whole semester on I'm not going to go through all of it. I'm feeling like Craig Hansen in the data part here. But, um, <laughs> but uh, we, um, <clears throat> oh, sorry. <laughs> but uh, we, uh, <laughs> but we, uh, we look at each part and we have to decide where we fit in and if we're doing areas that we need to do, and that's what we use our data to help make our program better. So I'm going to go through each one. Whoops, I probably went through. Um, Mark Twain, This we take what we call a time task analysis for three weeks throughout the year. We um, tally every minute of our day and see which of the four it's fitting in. So and like we, um, then we discuss that, decide what we need to do to improve our time, where we need to do things. Um, one thing I note on Nancy's, she does a lot more curriculum because she's a special, you know, so that's why that area is bigger for her, you know, so that's some of the things that we talk about. We're, um, then we have uh, Truman Elementary. Uh, D, you know, she has a lot of responsive services, so that's something we, you know, she has a lot of need in that area. Um, Mine, I noticed that I think I spend too much time on my paperwork, so I'm going to have to figure out how to work that out. But, um, I, there, you know, just things that we, I noticed that I need to work on in my time, too. At the middle school, um, once again, that responsive ser services just jumps out at us as an area of, of, of need. And that's an area that you can't really change without a lot of work. But, I mean, it's, you can't stop it because that's the kids coming to us and the needs they have. 
um, Brawla Junior High, their areas, and you can see, once again, their responsive services is a bigger part of their day. The high school, they're kind of all equally divided in the things that they do. Um, one thing I didn't note is their individual planning will get further, more time, because as you get closer to high school, you're going to spend more time on those kinds of things. Curriculum is heavier in the elementary because that's where you put the basis of social, need, social um, skills. And then RTC, she has a very unique job over there. And I encourage anybody who wants to know more about any of our schools to come visit us and talk to us. We'd love to share what we do with you on a daily basis. So that being said, the, um, am I getting into your slide? I am. I did totally all your slides. I am so sorry. But um, I'll let Sarah talk about the internal improvement review because that is um, uh, what we do to go over our program to make sure we are doing what we need to do to be fully implemented. I'm so sorry. You're just fine. You're just fine. So the internal improvement review is um, a document we actually have to share with you guys here. It's a, it's a lot to look at, but we evaluate lots of different pieces of programming by those different components. So there are standards. There's a whole rubric. Again, sorry, you're going to, I don't expect you to look at it all tonight, but feel free. You're going to get um, the district-wide IIR, Internal Improvement Review. You'll also get one for the building that you have adopted. So. Um, board members, you can see exactly what's going on in, in the buildings that, that you have chosen to, to participate with. So this internal improvement review has a scoring system in the rubric of a zero through three. Um, and it's recommended that it be completed annually. Um, it's it's a, a hefty task to complete it annually. It has been a few years since, um, since we have completed the IIR. So we're excited to, to dig in and tr just find out how healthy our program is or isn't so that we can um, make some improvements. Let me get over here. Sorry. Okay, so um, this year we wanted to not only assess the district-wide counseling program, but also in each building. So what we did is counselors in their buildings sat down with their administrators and they went through each item and kind of talked about, okay, so for example, um, Sorry, on one of these, when it comes to um, the program foundation, some of those are, are pretty, pretty cut and dried, if that happens to be the first one that you're looking at. Let me get to the other one here. Sorry. Okay. Oh. So um, program foundation is a, the, the, the bones of, of the program. And you can actually see in, in this slide that that is where we scored lowest. And there's a, a very good reason why. I'll get to that in just a second. The system support, we scored at an 89. The school counseling curriculum at a 78. Individual planning at an 82. Responsive services, a 93. We do a great job of meeting the needs of our kids in the minute. And that's, to me, um, super important. Can't focus on your classes if, if you're having other issues that are keeping you from being successful. So overall, our percentage of implementation sits at an 81%. So we are mostly implemented. We're feeling, we're feeling like we're doing a lot of things really good, how, really well. However, we wanted to look at that program foundation. So that program foundation score, um, when, you, when you peruse, you'll see that we scored super low in the area of having a comprehensive counseling manual for the district. Um, we can't find one. <laughs> we aren't sure where it is, or I think we, we had one at one point that was last done by Gloria Larravee, which would have been uh, 90s, late 90s, early 2000s, somewhere in there. So um, there is a model for the state. They have a sample out there. So based on, because we all had to score this at a zero, because although some of these components are in place, for example, we know there are school board policies that govern counseling. We know that there are ethical standards. We know that there's a job description. We know that there are those things, but we don't have it in, in the, the, the uh, comprehensive manual that the state's looking for. So we're going to be working on putting that together. So that scored very low, and then program manual is utilized, reviewed, and revised. Well, that's a zero. <laughs> so um, that, that was why... Um, we've taken this on as a K-12 counseling um, 
program that we're going to work to improve this over the next year, just get these pieces in place, because this is an easy place that we can make a lot of improvement really quickly in, in terms of our internal improvement review. So that being said, I, we talked about the fact that we did this as a district, and we did it also within our buildings. So we took those building scores and compiled them into um, the district goal. So there's our district goal. Um, at the building level, um, we all had different goals. We wanted to set a goal that we could make um, not just K-12, but it, in our buildings. And so at RTI, RTC, um, Janelle's going to be working on the system support number four, which you can, you can dig in and see, but that the program is supported by the administration through, and you can see those um, prioritizing relevant professional development, program activities, counseling program activities, and inclusion of counselors in, in lots of different ways. So that's the goal that um, she and her administrators have chosen to focus on. Then at the high school level, um, we have chosen the cur curriculum. You know, Julie talked about the fact that Counseling curriculum is more easily um, administered at the elementary levels because they have time. Those kids get to come to them. Um, at the high school, there isn't necessarily that, that window of time where we counselors can get in and do that. However, um, we've been talking with our administrators and we're going to start using the advisory class, that 30 minutes every Friday, to start implementing some counseling curriculum. So um, we, our goal is that we're going to partner um, not just us and the administrators, but with the teachers and develop um, a 9 through 12 plan for every Friday. It'll, it won't be all of the curriculum that, that we're required to cover, but it'll be surely a lot more than we're doing now. So um, we're looking forward to being able to get in there and help teachers um, have meaningful conversation through these counseling lessons with their, with their students. And then... Now you're going to be nice and share. I'm, I'm going to be I'm nice not. and give you yeah, your time. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. So um, the junior high is going to work on, and theirs is in system support, their time on task analysis. They looked direct at it, and they felt that they could maybe work on spending directly their, more time with students. So, so that was something they wanted to do. Um, at the middle school, um, Aaron and Jarena have decided that they really want to look at their curriculum. Their world has changed with having a four through six now, and so they're adjusting their curriculum and trying to figure out times that they can get into the classrooms a little bit more and do that kind of thing. Um, at Wyman, I'm really good at knowing what I need to do, but I'm not really good at writing down what I need to do. And so um, my goal is what they call calendaring, and that's where you um, have your whole year and everything set up so you know where you're going to be. I mean, I know what I'm going to do, but if somebody else walked in, they would have no idea. So I need to work on that. And uh, Dee over at Truman, she is going to work on more of her individual um, planning and doing more of these kinds of surveys and tests with her students so that she can make better, um, better um, decisions when, when helping students for their future. And then um, over at Mark Twain, Nancy is going to work on her curriculum. She does do a lot with curriculum, and uh, so she's just going to continue to match it up with the GLEs that are provided by the state to make it a, a, a strength in her program in that way. Okay. So um, another goal we don't have written on here is we would like to come visit you all every year. And we promise not to tell you about the same things every year, so you're going to get our... our uh, fun stuff a little at a time, but we want you to see our progress we make, we want you to know what we do, and we want you to feel comfortable coming to see us. Um, we couldn't do our job without you, hence why we celebrate the National School Counseling. I tell my teachers every year, if we didn't have your support, we would never make it. And we feel the same way about you all. If we didn't have your support, we could not do our jobs. And so we appreciate you. We thank you for what you do for us. And please, you're welcome to come anytime visit. I might stick you with a kid and play ch checkers or something but we'll, we'll invite you in the last thing we have on here is just some links that we refer to quite often for um, our positions and if you're ever perusing and can't sleep at night great place to start um, to, to learn things and it's ever-changing as you can see by guidance and counseling so I believe that was all we had so do you guys have any questions, yeah, any questions? Um, I actually just have a comment to make I've seen your work firsthand, and I have to say, you guys do an amazing job. Um, I, it's, they're very creative individuals. They have had to, some of them have had to go outside the box uh, to come up with some solutions, and, and you've, you've done a Thank fantastic you. Thank job. You. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. I think that. the real benefit of your visit is to give people 
us included, really the broad scope of what the job is. Because I know that there's attitude out there that, and, and, and I think this is stems from history in a lot of places, including Rolla, the easiest job in the system is to be a counselor. Yeah. You know, you put your retired coaches in as counselors, you know, that kind of thing. Right. You know, and it, it, it's a complex job, and this, this shows. It, yeah, you know, thank you. It, you is, it is complex and ever-changing, and it's not always something we can talk about. A lot of what we do yeah. has some confidentiality mm -hmm. to it, mm -hmm. so it, it makes it even more challenging to advocate. People ask what you do, and you can't tell them the details of everything right. you do all day. Right. So mm -hmm. you're right, and we appreciate your yeah. recognizing that challenge. Go ahead, Jane. Oh, I was just going to say I would like to have everybody introduce themselves. Yeah, I was going to say the whole. Now, we'll, we'll take the microphone oh. off the stand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that has been what school you know, they serve. Good, I, I, yeah, I was going to ask the yeah. same thing. Because yeah. I don't think everybody, you're right, we have, Carla may not know everybody because uh, she's our newest board member. And we've had some, some changes. New, new changes in our counseling department. Yeah. Becky Snodgrass, Rolla Junior High. Janelle Duncan, Rolla Technical Institute and Rolla Technical Center. Nancy Cook, Mark Twain. Aaron Buttle, Rolla Middle School. Kimberly Maskery, I'm the sophomore freshman counselor for students A through K. Jeremy Jamison, Rolla Junior High. Jarena Fleshman, Rolla Middle School. Monica Lyle, I am the new high school counselor uh, for freshmen and sophomores L through Z. Roger Bridgman, high school counselor, students, junior and senior students, last name uh, A through K. <laughs> That's a change this year also. Yeah. And Julie, Julie, we are missing Truman. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So um, when I was looking at your pie charts that you went through there pretty fast, but um, you said Nancy has a lot of uh, classroom work because she's, she's not special. She's a, a special. She, What's She's a regular special? rotation. <laughs> She's in a regular rotation, sorry. Back to those terms and stuff, things, but, and you know how music, art, PE are a, considered a special. Okay. She does that oh, every so day. It's part of yes. So, okay. right. Mm -hmm. okay. Where, like, my schedule is I go in every other week, but I'm kind of an extra, not a special. So, so. I'm wondering. But <laughs> uh, you're extra special. We're all special. <laughs> <laughs> with, with your responsive time, time allocated to responsive needs was very high, right? I mean, you all mentioned that. So I'm wondering, as you get into the classroom more, if that response time won't go down because you're mm -hmm. going to have that relationship with kids. They're going to talk about mm -hmm. those things that they come to talk to you. I wonder if Nancy, I mean, that's part of what Nancy experiences there because she has. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I found that it helps that I see eight classes every day, so I see every kid in my building every week. And I address a lot of the issues during guidance, sure. during the time they're with me. So and they don't have to come and knock on your door. Yeah, it, it really does. I don't have as much, you know, just drop-ins now. But if I do need to see them, I have time in the morning before class, and then in the afternoon I have a little time. I can have kids come down. Yeah. And I'm sure there's a big difference between elementary and versus high school, too. Oh, you know, yes. So, yes. Go, but, you know. big. <laughs> so, so true or false, every student in the district will see a counselor at least once a year. Oh, yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I mean, because there was a time, and I've actually had people tell me, well, counselors only see the top 10% and the kids are getting in trouble. <laughs> Seriously, that's, that, that's sort of the attitude that <laughs> right. I've heard. Right. That's the one nice thing about going into the classrooms where I, because I know all the kids and they know me and, and, and that is a difference because yeah. otherwise I probably wouldn't, but I do enjoy getting they, to that. I mean, if they don't have the, a familiarity and a comfort level, your job's hampered, you know. So. I'm also really glad that you all are doing groups with kids that have, um, Issue, special issues, not necessarily issues that maybe affect their academic work, but just their ability to to uh, feel good and work hard and be successful in school, I guess. But um, And I think in that sense, especially at the high school as you're doing more of that, and Monica and others are doing more of that, 
I think your responsive time is going to go down too because you're taking care of some of those issues in more of a preventive way mm -hmm. instead of mm -hmm. waiting till it becomes a crisis mm -hmm. where I need to go see the counselor. And we're hoping that um, implementation of counseling curriculum through the advisories is going to even further, even if it's not us delivering the content that when, when the teachers are delivering the content, they're still getting that information and developing those coping skills. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So great. Very good. It's fantastic. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you guys very, very much. Very helpful. Thank you. Very interesting. Thank you for Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't think there's any old retired coaches up there right now. No, there's a couple of young ones. There's a couple of young ones, but no old ones. No old, ones. <laughs> old actives. <laughs> old actives. <laughs> you know, I could I could name my my counselors from high school, but I don't know if I ever ever spoke to them. You know. So, oh yeah. Really, really and so have I. Well, I just want to take a chance to say thank you because yeah. I know you guys had. A lot of transition this year, and uh, you know, that was a lot yeah. of hard work for everybody. Yeah, um, everybody yeah. sort of had to shift their gears a little bit, didn't they? Yeah. Thank you. You've seen Jeremy come home whining all the time? <laughs> he does whine a lot. Yes. <laughs> you probably know better than I do. Is that no, whine with well. an H or whine without the H? <laughs> well, he'll gain some brownie points if he sticks around for a certain book study. Oh, okay. You know, and, uh, I'll say one more thing because I think it needs to be said is that when you have your manual and it's clear cut what you do and how you do it and all that, I think we administrators need to be uh, aware of that and respectful of that and not stick you with 20 other responsibilities outside of that. I mean, we're all part of a team, right? And you're going to work together and you're going to do extra things, but at the same time, we need to be respectful of that, that you do have a job to do. And when you look at the time task analysis, you'll see that there are barriers to implementation listed. Sure. And if, if you have any questions about what those are at the individual levels, don't, don't hesitate to contact us because there are there are some things that keep us from being able to do what we need to do. And we, we're we very lucky that, by and large, it's minimal. But. And, and I do think, you know, with the book study being family engagement, and Jane has already talked about staying in this book for next year and really going into it in depthly. Uh, I, I think this group is going to play an important role in what's realistic, what's needed, how to go about doing things, you know, and, and helping everyone else in the district know how to do that. So, yeah. So. We're here. All right. Thank I'm you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you all. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.